Hi everybody, this is Popeye. I've been asked to share some instruction on how to use a Morse key. I guess first of all, we have to talk about how to set up a key. You'll notice that you can set both the gap, or you can make it very, very fine, so you barely move it. What I find is that about the space of two postcards put together, or four sheets of paper, I adjust it for about that much gap. The other aspect is I like some people like very little tension. I tend to be the other way. I like a fair amount of tension on the key. By that I mean the force that pushes back when I push down. There's a good reason for this. I've done a lot of my Morse code out in the field and <laughs> when you're bouncing around, when you're sitting on the ground, when the wind is blowing, etc., you want a little bit more pushback so you don't accidentally send characters you don't mean to. Okay? So those are the basics. The other aspect, and this is important, please pay attention. Just like your feet are the beginning of dance moves or martial arts, where your fingers are on the key is the foundation for how you send. Fundamentally, your hand will naturally want to close up roughly like this. And that's what we're doing here. As we put fingers usually about the noon, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock position. Something like that. You do not, not, not use a finger or slap on a key. Trust me on this, don't do it. So let's start out with a classic position like that. What this does, you'll notice when I press, the hand isn't moving a lot when I press. In other words, whatever motion comes through my fingers goes into the key. The next step is rhythm. Often people memorize, let's say, the pattern of the code, but they don't get the rhythm. There are dits. One, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, and there are da's. And you can combine them. Let's use the familiar letter V. You hear the rhythm of that? Again, V's. That's a very good way to warm up your fist. Let me explain. The word fist means how you send coat. If you say a person has a good fist, they mean they're sending well. If you say they have a bad fist, they're probably sending like this. Popeye humor, not very good. Okay, the next thing are rhythm drills. I'm going to play one for you and just listen to the way that it sounds. We're going to be sending Ben's best bent wire. Why that? Because it builds rhythm. But you hear the way that the code flows? When you're sending a message, it should be coming out the same way. You have a certain cadence so that the person on the other end can copy in a steady flow. If you're rushing ahead, pausing, or your characters are uncertain, you're going to generate mistakes in your message. Remember, speed through accuracy. Sending the message correctly slower the first time is faster than sending it at twice the speed with many repeats. Okay, the question comes up, and it's a good question. Well, should I use a straight key, or should I use paddles? Uh, what's a bug? Okay, welcome to the specialized world of radio telegraphy. Number one, I recommend a straight key. I've been doing this for almost five decades, and believe me, I'm always using a straight key, and there's a reason for it. Uh, when you're out in the field especially, you're going to be sending and receiving message traffic. I want to say that again. This is all about sending message traffic. If you're just chatting back and forth, it's great to go rolling along with a high-speed key, but here's the problem. If you're using something high-speed, like a set of paddles, Remember that somebody has to receive this on the other end, and very, very few people can sit there with a pencil and paper over 20 words per minute copying a message, okay? So please let that sink in. Think messages. Here's the other aspect. In the field, generally speaking, I'm using a key like this. That's something that straps to my knee so that I can send my traffic. You notice that it's very, very reliable. A key is nothing more than a switch. It's either open, no signal, or it's closed, and you have a signal. That's all it is. 
You'd be surprised how many things can go wrong as your key becomes more complex, becomes a set of paddles, becomes a bug. Always remember, think, I may be operating outside of the ham shack, and I may be passing radio traffic. Okay? So, you have a huge key that was developed for shore stations in the uh, marine industry, and you have a tiny little key like this. Is there a big difference? Well, let's listen and find out. Remember the drill we were doing about Ben's best bent wire? Well, let me see what this sounds like here. You notice, by learning the sound patterns on a straight key, you can send with a small key like this. I've sent traffic before using, uh, frankly, two pieces of wire because somebody forgot the key. And uh, somebody named, by the way, Popeye. Okay, the question comes up, how do I learn the Morse code? Well, quite often um, this has been handled on the forums, but let's talk to you directly here. There are three apps, or two apps and one program that are highly recommended. The first one is Morse Toad. Uh, I tend uh, to not use that one since I'm already conversant in the code, but friends of mine who use it really like it. This will teach you the sounds of the characters and uh, gradually build and a uh, vocabulary of letters, numbers, and basic punctuation. The other program is Golf 4, Foxtrot, Oscar, November, and that's a very good program. I use it to load up, uh, oh, anything, documents, news stories, whatever, put it in there, and it will send it to me as Morse code. And we'll cover these in detail. The last one is Morse Machine. What you want to do is you want to transition from the app to being able to use a key. That's very important. And again, I emphasize a key. And the reason being is that your concentration should be on receiving at least two to one. In other words, if I, if I practice receiving 20 minutes a day, take a break, take 10 minutes of sending, because sending is fun, but receiving is going to be the most important. That's where you learn the rhythm of the code, and that way you're actually having to receive something that you don't know the text ahead of time. That, by the way, is why transmitting seems so easy. I hear it all the time. It's normal. I was the same way with, uh, yeah, but I can send, you know, I can send fast, but I can't receive very well. Well, the reason being is you know what you're saying. It's like learning a foreign language. And I've had to learn a couple of them. And I've had that thing where I said something, it sounded beautiful to my ears, but the native speaker in the country I'm in tilts their head with this look of misunderstanding. They have no idea what I just said. I knew it but I hadn't really learned their language. So here we go. Remember your three position contact, just as if your hand were going to be turning a knob here. Remember your drills, bends, best, bent, wire. Look up the characters and remember the rhythm. Okay, and now when you send, don't try to send fast, try to send smoothly. That's very important. The question also comes up about why a straight key. Let's give you a, a true story, unlike most of my stories. Um, we were up doing a winter training exercise. We had a great burster terminal to send a high speed burst with our military unit we were with. Everything was loaded in, the message traffic was in, it was 22 degrees below zero. So naturally I had that and my radio battery pack inside of my parka. So one minute before sked time, pull everything out, hook it up, hook up this great gadget. It would do anything except work. It turns out it was only rated down to freezing. So you know how we got through, how we established contact, how we ran the mission? Just like this. Seven, seven, nine, it was our call sign. So at any rate, this worked. When the magic wonder terminal that was going to eliminate Morse code, <laughs> well, it literally froze. Yeah. For something to send, to practice your sending, I highly recommend sending from a book, some sort of printed material. The reason being is that'll give you a normal distribution of letters that are used in normal speech. Also that way, and this is important, you're not trying to think of something to say while you're practicing. So here's what that would look like. Beginning right about here. 
That's a BT. It means uh, break. Here it comes. And it would go just like that, line after line. And you notice how it gives you a chance to, again, develop that rhythm. That's very important. The Polish sets. You can see how easy that would be to copy on the other end, especially if we were to slow it down. I'm just sending it a normal hand sent speed of about 15 to 18 words per minute. 